What's up everybody? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. In today's Tech Tip Tuesday, I wanna talk about pistons, piston design, compression ratios, and the different alloys in which one you want to run in your application. Let's just get right into it. There are basically, there's actually a fifth, well, there's basically four types of pistons available on the market. One of them I don't have. These two are the same. There's another one that is a cast aluminum construction. Um, in my opinion, Technology has come so far with this next upgrade that no one should be running just pure cast aluminum pistons anymore. At a minimum, you should be running a cast hyper-eutectic piston. That's what this is. This is what we use in all of our Smetting 383 crate engines. And these are great pistons because they have a really high silicon content, which basically means they have a very, very low rate of thermal expansion. Now, because they have such a low rate of thermal expansion, the piston to wall clearance, we can run a lot tighter. We actually run about two thou piston to wall clearance on this model so that when you have your, when you start the engine cold, the clearance is already so tight that there's very, very little piston wear or piston noise. These engines run extremely quiet. Another reason they run quiet is they have an offset wrist pin, which means this hole where the wrist pin goes is not actually perfectly in the center of the piston. And we do that, again, so that as the piston comes down, it's able to rock the correct direction, and when it travels, it's perfectly stable. There's no rock in it. Um, these are great pistons. Um, this can easily hold about 550, maybe 600 horsepower naturally aspirated without a problem. The only con to these is they are on the brittle side compared to a forged piston. So if you have any detonation or extreme rapid cylinder pressure, these are gonna be a little fragile. Now, in a street engine, no problem. It's never gonna happen. But in a power adder application, that's when we need to move you up to the next piston. So again, the benefits of this piston, very, very low thermal expansion, very quiet. The skirts will last forever because the piston is basically already at its bore size. And they're great. They're super affordable. They're lightweight. It's a great piston. Stepping up, we have a 4032 forged aluminum piston. Now, instead of being a cast piston, this is now a forged piston. So you can see in the bottom here, we have a forging die. This is stamped in a forge, and then it comes, a machine comes back and mills everything, cuts the ring grooves and whatnot. In the forged piston world, we have 4032 and 2618. 2618 has very little silicon content. Remember, Hyperutectric has a lot, and that's why it has low thermal expansion. Well, this guy is kind of in the middle. In the forged piston world, this is the best piston for your daily driver application. Um, it has very little thermal expansion, again, because it has a higher silicon content than 2618. We'll use these pistons generally in a very high-performance, snapshot-aspirated, just regular street engine. This is a piston that you can fire the car up and immediately get on the highway and need to pass somebody and you'll be fine because this piston again has less bore clearance than a 2618. It's already tighter. Um, and then because these are forged, they are much more durable. They can take impacts, they can take abuse and they're not gonna shatter or crack like a hyperutectic cast or regular junk cast saloon piston will. So again, we use these on just mild performance daily drivers. Again, you can do offset wrist pins, you can do center wrist pins, you can do any ring you want. Um, and they're great little pistons. Nothing bad to say about them. But whenever you exceed the rating of this piston, that's when we go to the 2618 forged aluminum piston. And, and right now I'm not talking about the shapes, I'm just talking about the pure metal composition. This is a forged piston that has almost no silicon in it. So it actually has a lot of thermal expansion. Pros and cons to that, it has no silicon in it. So it is extremely durable. Um, these are incredibly hard to crack. They're more malleable than any of these. Like this one, if you whack it with a hammer, it's gonna shatter. This one, if you whack it with a hammer, it's gonna have a big dent, but it might have a few hairline cracks. If you slam this thing with a hammer, there's gonna be not a single crack in it. It is so malleable and soft which is good because an extremely high performance power adder, drag race, high horsepower engines, 
we want this to never crack and break. We'd rather it dent or take the abuse rather than shatter and then tear up other stuff. The con to these is they have a bunch of thermal expansion, so you have to run them cold, or you have to run a lot of clearance cold in them. Um, if your engine has 2618 pistons, you need to be especially careful about doing anything to it before it's had a chance to fully warm up because your piston to wall clearance is gonna be massive. And that piston's just gonna be rocking in there until it grows and fills up the bore clearance. So again, we'll use these on really high horsepower stuff. Um, anything that's gonna be raced, anything that's pushing the limits on compression or power. Um, and just as a customer, you need to be aware, I've got 2618 pistons, let the motor warm up. You should let any engine warm up completely before you floor it or see some real RPM, but especially with 2618. So again, the next bad boy is still the same composition, it's still a 2618 piston, but now we can start adding thermal barrier coatings to help protect our aluminum investment here. This is a JE Ultra piston, and these are super trick. So they have a hard anodized gold thermal barrier that makes this extremely resistant to heat so again, if you get a little spicy with your timing or your air fuel ratios and your cylinder pressure and your EGT goes through the roof, this gold anodized coating will help keep the heat off the piston so you don't accidentally melt it. Um, whenever these pistons melt, they always melt right here on the intake valve relief. And that's because they are the thinnest right there to that top ring land. So they'll always have a little tear streak right there where it melted in a light case scenario. But these are really trick. These are super heavy duty forgings. You can see they have a lot more struts in them and they're just super nice. What's also really cool about them is on this face, the skirt is about that thick, but on this face, it's a lot thicker. And that's because on this particular piston, this side is gonna be its thrust component. So as it travels down in the block, it's gonna have pressure on that thicker skirt. And this skirt will never have serious pressure on it, so we can make it a lot smaller and save a lot of weight. And you're not sacrificing anything with that. Another nice thing about our pistons that we use is in between the top and second ring, we have what's called the accumulator groove. And you'll see it on all of these, actually. They all have this smaller groove in between them. And that is there to disrupt a detonation event or shock wave that's coming over the piston. Um, in case the shockwave makes it past the top ring and gets into the second ring, this accumulator groove will basically disrupt it and try to save everything so nothing terrible happens. We don't break a ring. Um, this Ultra Piston also has lateral gas ports, which you can see a little dot there, and you can see these little dots going all the way around. The purpose of those is for when the piston is coming up and building compression in the motor, gases are going to go into that lateral gas port and come around the back side of the top ring and apply pressure onto it and out onto the bores and seal it up. And again, it's gonna happen on the power stroke as a lot as there's, whenever there's cylinder pressure, basically, gases come around the top ring, put pressure on the back, pop it out, a little better ring seal there. And then we also do different skirt coatings. These are basically just a low friction skirt coating to help protect things. They're not completely necessary. These pistons will come out of motors with you know, 60, 70,000 miles, and the skirts look brand new. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on. Okay, that's all I've got for y'all today. Just a quick one take, quick overview on pistons. So, again, to recap, if it's a regular street motor, um, has a little bit of horsepower, has a nice cam in it, I have no problem running the higher speed tactics. If you're pushing the compression a little bit higher and you know you're going to be making a little more power than your standard, you know, heads cam. LS or 350, let's go to the 4032. Um, if you're trying to be John Force and you wanna have a race car, put 2618s in it. You got nothing really to lose. Just don't get on it while it's cold. Again, any engine, you should let the oil warm up. That's really important. So let me know what you guys wanna hear about next time and I'll see y'all later.